In this video, we're going to take a look at models that use precision tree, at risk, and multiple components. Let's begin with a little bit of background. Imagine that you import carcasses from another country for human consumption and that some of these carcasses may or may not be contaminated with a pathogen that can cause harm to humans. Usually what happens is these things are subjected to organoleptic uh, inspection. That basically means people look at them, smell them, and feel them. If a carcass passes that test, then it's subjected to a swab test that's considered more sensitive. If a carcass isn't contaminated, it's of no concern to us. And a carcass that fails the, the look, feel, see test is destroyed. A carcass that fails the swab test is destroyed. But sometimes a contaminated carcass gets by both of those tests and a variable number of people will consume meat from any one of the imported carcasses. And some of those people uh, will get sick. So imagine that we have a couple of specific questions we're being asked to answer. What's the probability that an animal infected with the pathogen of interest imported from the country of interest will enter your food supply? How many infected carcasses could enter your food supply? Notice they are different questions, two different ways of getting at the same risk. What's the greatest number of people that you can expect to be exposed to infection from these carcasses? How many people will get infected from meat from these carcasses? What's the probability that any one person will become infected by meat from these carcasses? So keep in mind that we always have questions that we're trying to answer for the risk manager. Let's go take a look at our model. This begins with some number of imported carcasses. The very first thing we ask is, is the carcass infected? Yes, it is. No, it's not. If it's not infected, then we don't care what happens next. That's not of interest to us because of the questions that we were given. Here we have a number of carcasses that were actually infected. Then we'd like to know how many of these 32 passed the visual inspection. And the answer is four did. We caught 28 of them. So of these four, how many of them tested negative? So they are positive and they test negative. So the yeses are those things that we're concerned with. So in this little scenario we're looking at, we imported 1,980 carcasses, and one of them, 32 of them were infected, and one of them actually made it into our food supply. So this is the first part of the model, to find out how many carcasses could get into our food supply. The second part of our model, we go to this tab, Humans, where we're looking at how many people could be um, exposed or made sick by this. So you'll notice that the number of infected carcasses is carried over from the previous page. That was the tree tab in cell B34. The total number of people who are going to be uh, exposed to the infected carcass in this case is 123. That's determined by adding up all the numbers in column F. Okay, The probability of infection is also carried over from the tree model, cell B26. And if we're looking for cell B26, here we have uh, a probability of infection. And you'll notice that this is actually a distribution. So we don't know what that probability is, but it comes from a distribution that looks like that. And we move back over here, and we want to find out how many people were actually infected. So of the 123 people who were exposed to meat from an infected carcass, we have here a binomial distribution that says we have N equal to 123, P is equal to 6.64, and so you are looking at what could happen. Anywhere between 0 and 123 people would get sick. 
but most likely it's something from in the middle of the distribution. The mean of this distribution, by the way, is 0.78, excuse me, 78.78. And as it turns out, we got a 79 in this particular iteration. Take a look over here. This is the number of carcasses that were contaminated. In this column, we simply have a number of carcasses, one, two, three, and so on. In this particular cell, we have a distribution. The number of people who are exposed to the carcass. And in this cell, there is a bit of logic that's being used. Not so important in the first module in our class, but later on when you begin to build modules, build models, uh, this may come in handy. This basically says equal sign if. So this is a logic statement and it says if the value in D5, take a look at D5, D5 is number one, is bigger than the value in B4, which is a one, put a zero here. Otherwise, get the number from E5 and put it here. So in this case, D5 is one, B4 is one. They are equal. So according to the instructions, this says put number E5 here. Okay, that's done. Let's move down here. This says take a look at D6. If that's bigger than B4, then put a zero here. <coughs> D6 is a two. That is bigger than one, so we put a zero here. And you would find similar logic all the way down. So there are zeros all the way down. Let's go back to our tree. Take a look at the number of carcasses that make it into the country. Let's try another. In this iteration, we had a zero. Now we go back here and we find out zero is carried forward and this says take a look at D5. If it's bigger than D4, put a zero. And one is bigger than zero, so we have a zero. And in this case, there are no humans who are affected. So back to our tree. I've gathered up all the inputs and put them in red right here. Then, whenever they are referenced anywhere in the model, we can just use this cell reference. The value of that is if I get better data and find out that the prevalence of the pathogen, right now we're using a triangular distribution, it's between 1 and 3 percent, most likely 1 and a half. If I should get some new data or some better information, I can change it just in one place right here and know that everywhere else that that number occurs in my model, the change is taking place. I've also gathered up all the outputs here. The details are not so terribly important for us. Uh, this is just collecting various outputs either from this page, probabilities on this page, or values from the human page. What we're going to do is this. We're going to take a look at, uh, let's see, the number of carcasses. that get into our food supply and we'll also take a look at the number of people who are exposed and the number of people who are infected. Okay, so let's run a simple simulation here. We'll begin with, uh, we'll look at 5,000 iterations of this model. This is the number of carcasses. Notice that zero is most common. One happens about 20 percent of the time. Two is happening about one or two percent of the time. You can see three and four have happened. Looking at the minimum and maximums, we see uh, zero is the most common value over 75% of the time. No animals get into our food supply. Four looks like it may have happened. Oh, that might be once or twice. Uh, we can worry about the exact numbers later. But the average over those 5,000 iterations was about one quarter of an animal for each. Now if we scroll one down here, we're looking at the number of people who are exposed. Notice we have multiple distributions here. When there are no carcasses, there are no people. Here is the spread of the number of people who could be exposed when there's one carcass. 
here's the spread for two, the spread for three, and presumably the spread for four. And, and that might not be much of a spread if, if it only occurred once. So we get different clusters of data. This is the number of people who actually uh, would, would get sick. And again, you can see they come in clusters for one, for two, for three. And we could use features of, of Excel to explore this in greater detail. But what we would say is there's somewhere between no one and 301 people will get sick in any given year. On average, we would expect about 20 people per year to get sick. But it wouldn't occur like that. It would likely occur with a, either a lot of years of zeros and then some occasional bad years like a 300 or in this case if there's one carcass it would be between maybe 50 and 100 people would get sick. So you see there's a wide range of models there are a lot of neat things that you can do with probabilistic risk assessment in the spreadsheet environment with fairly simple models.